fun of Kenny Black. He, he's suspended, and he's decided that John Robertson's injury problem should confine him to the bench. Otherwise, though, with the skipper Gary Mackay back fully fit to play in midfield, and Craig Levine continuing at centre-back, that's close to Hart's best side. And the warmest welcome from the home fans was reserved for Ian Ferguson, who scored that crucial goal against Bayern Munich ten days ago, taking his season's tally to 11. There's no Frank McAvenny for Celtic. He's with the reserves at Celtic Park, and Anton Rogan is left out with Tommy Bond stepping back into the number three shorts with Billy Stark in midfield. And it's a big day for half a million pounds signing Tommy Coyne, who makes his debut after his transfer from Dundee, where he scored eight goals this season after his marvellous exploits last year. And this afternoon's referee is Kenny Hope from Clarkston, the man who was in some trouble with the SFA for not ordering off Willie Miller and the Rangers Aberdeen match at Ibrox. So Celtic get the match underway. It's last season's champions against the runners-up. Both sides doing less well than that this year, but another very important match with Celtic having to look for two points if they are to retain their hopes of staying in the championship race. Hearts trying to battle back into a European spot and, of course, looking for a boost for their trip to Germany in midweek when they face Bayern Munich in the Olympic Stadium on Tuesday evening. Ian Ferguson was the player who gave Hearts that lead. The first leg hit at Tyne Castle. Watching in the stand, the Scotland coach Andy Roxburgh, much more relaxed today than he perhaps was early on on Wednesday evening. Tied to Cahoon, the tackle came from Barnes. Free kick given instantly, and Coyne makes sure it's not taken quickly. Now the referee is going to have a word now with John Cahoon for spot of speech play. He was protesting about the fact he was denied the opportunity to take the quick free kick. So Dave McPherson has gone into the box for Hearts. So has Alan McLaren joining Mike Galloway. A potent threat in the air now from Hearts. With John Cahoon. Ferguson with a shot. Breaks down for Galloway and a brilliant save from Pat Bonner. Someone certainly did the Celtic defence, but it was resolved by Bonner. Determined play by Hearts. The shot ricocheting away there. Across to Galloway on the volley, and that's a brilliant stop by Bonner. Click on from McGee to Walker. Coin going through the middle with Grant. Walker trying the shot. Beaten away by Henry Smith for the corner kick. Randy Walker taking full advantage of the elements. The wind behind as he looked up for the shot from 25 yards. And Smith had to be quick. He couldn't hold it. That's a corner kick to Celtic. Again, Bannon wins it. Cahoon, a race between Bannon and Burns, and the throw goes to Hart, quickly taken to Ferguson, in the middle is Galloway, he only has Morris to face, Celtic getting men back quickly though, good defensive play from Celtic, Tommy Burns reacting quickly to send it back to Bonner, good play by Chris Morris, he's doing his own now, chance for Celtic, Such disappointment for Chris Morris, he did this all by himself. Challenging Ian Ferguson, playing the one-two with Walker, then sprinting through, getting the ball past Henry Smith, and it's just wide of the post. Tommy Craig on their feet in the Celtic dugout. Tommy Craig with some instructions. Person coming out, here's Gary Mackay, trying to release Cahoon. Good play by Cahoon, he's away from Barnes, he can do the cross. And the clearance was by McCarthy, that was magnificent wing play there by John Cahoon. Showing strength, determination, courage and lots of skill, hooking this back from Roy Aiken, and it was McCarthy who saved the day for seven. And the corner kick, Preston challenging, and didn't get a hold of the ball, but he did. Here's Cahoon again on the byline. And McCarthy had to get in there ahead of Dave McPherson to concede another corner kick. The Celtics at the moment are under siege. 
There's the headed away by McCarthy. So Bannon with the in swinger. Working out where the big men are, I think. There's Levine, McPherson, and there's off the crossbar from Ferguson. Once again, Pat Bonner is frustrated by his defenders. There was Levine, McPherson and Ferguson together, it came off the bar and is away for another corner. Well, can the Celtic defence survive this incredible onslaught from Marks? There's Bannon, well taken by Bonner. Oh, they did well in the air post. The Celtic fans not getting a great deal to show them out at this stage of the match. McKinley. Headed on by Galloway for Cahoon. It's blocked by Bonner. Great goalkeeping by Pat Bonner again. How badly it was required by Celtic. The head flick on from Galloway. There was Cahoon, the ball bouncing awkwardly initially. The shot forcing Bonner to recover very quickly as Ferguson closed in. There's Morris sliding it in. Up goes McPherson. McGee is there. Good play by McGee and a good tackle by Levine. There's Morris, the chance for Coyne. Celtic's best chance of the match so far, falling to the new signing, Tommy Coyne, right in front of goal, didn't catch the shot properly. That's one for Cahoon to chase, but he has no prospect of reaching that before Bonner. Well, I'll be checking with both Klinsmann, and this really has been a superb first half performance from Hearts. They have dominated pretty well from the start, and they are indeed unlucky, I reckon, not to be in front. Celtic owe a great debt to Pat Bonner with one magnificent save from Mike Galloway on the volley. So he's the main reason why the score sheet remains blank at halftime. It's Hearts nil, Celtic nil. So lots of food for thought at halftime for the Celtic manager, Billy McNeil. He must have been very concerned by the way Hearts dominated these early proceedings. And I've no doubt he'll have had some well-chosen words for his team during the interval. Alec McDonald would be very happy, I think, with the first half performance, except for the fact that Hearts, for all their superiority, have not found the net. So the second half now underway. Hearts, who got a great welcome back from their fans in view of their excellent first 45 minutes. Well played by Walker. Will they start coming in at the far post? His mixed day. Well, let's try to take that on the run, but McKinley anticipated the move. McPherson playing it away from McGee for yet another corner kick. Well, Celtic now putting some pressure on. Hearts may look to regret not taking advantage of the territorial advantage in the first half. Couldn't reach it, there's McGee. Trying to go all the way himself. Brilliant play from Mark McGee. Brings Billy McGill to his feet and the Celtic fans celebrate in style. Well, this was vintage Mark McGee. The corner kick from McStay. It was too high for McCarthy and for Stark. Now just look at this play from Mark McGee. A crowded penalty area, sidestepping Alan McLaren. Side flag is up against Ian Ferguson. Here's McGee. He's away from McPherson. Still Mark McGee going to the box. Tangling there with Berry. Celtic looking for a foul and it's not being given. Well, I wonder if Mark McGee 
on reflection, Mary Grant not taking the shooting chance after he got away from McPherson here, but determined to find a clear opening for the shot. The ball was out of reach when he went down in the challenge with Berry. That's Spectacular. That's a hot throw now. And Grant is aggrieved. Lansman gave it immediately. We'll have a word with Peter Grant for that outburst of dissent. This is Cahoon. Trying to get away from Tommy Burns. He's managed that. And the ball carried over in the end. The deflection giving the corner kick, though, to Hawks. Some great wing play again from Cahoon. Just look at the way he finds his space to go past Tommy Burns and it's behind for another corner so John Cahoon looking up Craig Levine one of the big men in the box Bonner taking that under pressure from Galloway good safe handling again from Pat Bonner Taking the pass here from Mackay now, just look at the way he looks up, sees Bonner, tries to flight that toward the top corner, but Bonner was there. Challenge there from Peter Grant, and a free kick's been given as Grant goes down, he was caught there. Well, McLaren and Gary Mackay look towards the Celtic player with not too much sympathy, it would appear. But there was the challenge which brought down Peter Grant. Celtic's free kick. Burns and McStay controlling traffic. Burns plays it. Walker to McStay. Absolutely magnificent. 13 minutes from the end. The castle rehearsed set piece. And now the Hawks players directing the attention of the referee to the linesman. What a great goal this was. Played to Andy Walker. Chipped into the gap for Paul McStay. Controlled superbly. Then drilled past Henry Smith. And I really cannot see what the problem may have been there. There's the linesman Joe Price from Bells Hill. Chatting there with Kenny Hope. Tommy Trigg and Billy McNeil waiting anxiously for the outcome. The referee waving the players away. Well, really, it was a magnificent piece of play from Celtic. And a long discussion between the two officials, all the players watching anxiously. And it looks as though three kicks been given. Well, let's try to find out the reason why. It certainly wasn't offside against McStay. He's all right in this position. McStay's perfectly all right. And when the ball was played in, I can see nothing amiss with that goal at all. problem this time it appears as though the Celtic fans have reacted rather badly towards the linesman there may have been some missiles on the field and the referee now talking to the police officers Tommy Burns and Paul McStay and Billy Stark trying to tell the Celtic fans to calm down and there's a police officer to have a word with Kenny Hope. Well, this is very sad indeed because the Celtic fans reacting very badly to that decision which came from linesman Joe Price and really it was one which baffled us and certainly upset. 
upset these Celtic fans. The offside flag is up. May have been three Hearts men offside. McGee sets off in chase with Levine. Strong play by Mark McGee. Here's McGee again. He really is incredibly powerful running the ball at his feet. He thinks there should have been an infringement or a, perhaps a corner kick. Strong there challenging Levine, then turning in the ball, coming inside, looking for the shooting chance, sidestepping another challenge. And then the shot, which may have been deflected, goes wide. Well. And there goes the final whistle, Celtic the winners, and that really, for my money, is justice in the second half performance, because that second goal by Paul McStay, which was chopped off, appeared to be perfectly good from this angle, although linesman Joe Price disagreed. But in the end, that had no bearing on the final result, so the Celtic Championship Challenge is still on. It's Hearts nil, Celtic 1.